Hey guys, just a quick one before this video starts. Um, bear in mind that this was filmed uh, a week or so ago and we've actually, um, I just want to make it perfectly clear that we've actually had a lot more issues since this was filmed. Um, I kind of briefly mentioned them in this video anyway, or I mentioned that there were issues. Um, but I just want to be totally clear, totally open and transparent. We're not actually uh, thrilled at the moment with this caravan. We've had some major issues that we're sort of working through at the moment. We haven't even been able to do a overnighter or anything in this caravan yet. It's just not um, been usable yet. Uh, but we're working through them and when I can, I'll tell you all about it um, once we've uh, got some answers. Anyway, I'll show you around the new caravan. Hello. G'day guys, how are you going? So um, we've picked up the new van. Uh, we actually picked it up like what, two weeks ago? Two, yeah, two weeks ago. Yep. But it's, it's been in an off-road living having a battery fit out done. But what we'll do is we'll shoot back to the start and we'll show you a bit of footage of us collecting it. I woke up feeling on top of the world Like nothing's ever gonna bring me down This feeling got me flying high as a Touch the ground It may not be my birthday But I just want to celebrate So as you can see, when we picked up the van, um, we actually took it straight to a weigh bridge and weighed it. And just before we did that, uh, on the way there, I pulled over and emptied all the water tanks. So it was absolutely empty. We just wanted to get a base weight to see um, if the compliance plate on this thing was a true reflection of what the caravan weighed. Because we'd heard stories of where sometimes there's one or 200 kilos uh, variance between the two. So anyway, we were pleasantly yeah, we were happy with that. Yeah, yeah, pleasantly surprised that it was that it was very close. It was, yeah. it was forty kilos difference. Yeah, and from what we've heard, when you fully empty the water tanks, there's still some water left in there. So that's probably what the water what it was. Yeah, the across the three tanks, and also with the gas cylinders full. So I'm pretty happy that that's all that would be. Yeah. Anyway, how about we show you the new van? Let's start. I'll do the outside, eh? Uh, I'll start up the front here, Tiff. <clears throat> so you can stay that side, babe. Pretty standard, standard stuff, nothing too crazy. It's a DO35 Cruise Master hitch, um, BM Pro trail safe breakaway. We've got Alco ESC, um, the stability control. We've never had stability control on any van before, so don't really know what to expect with that. But, and that um, was an optional upgrade. Yeah, that was an option that we, we paid a bit extra for. Um, it's got the Safety Dave camera hook up here. I haven't actually hooked that up to the car yet. So there's a couple of cameras on the back you'll see in a minute. Um, in the chassis itself is six inch by two inch, four mil thick, and the uh, suspension is Alco Enduro X suspension. So it's um, it's all sort of off-road stuff. Um, uh, we optioned that up, didn't we, Tiff? That was a stone guard? Yes, yep. And we also are gonna run a stone stomper, but we've gotta get some dimensions off this to water one. There's a little bit of a lead time on that. So we're waiting on that. Um, gas bottles, we've run 4.5s. That was, we weren't 100% sure what to do with that because we've always run nine kilos in the past and nine kilos are really convenient because you can just take them to pretty much any servo in Australia and swap them over for full ones. Four and a halfs have to be refilled. They can't be swapped as far as I'm aware. Um, so we'd only be able to do that in, in main towns. But the reason we went four and a half was just because there was quite a weight saving on the front here. The front end is pretty scarce. It's fairly, um, there's not a hell of a lot going on there. We don't have big toolboxes or anything. so. Shouldn't be too heavy. Uh, up top here, we've got a, um, that sun's just coming out, it's nice. Yeah. Up top here, we've got, um, we optioned this up as well. It's just a, a, a protective cover for the window there. So there's a nice window there over our main bed. We were just worried about stone chips and scratches and stuff. Yeah. Um, standard. I was gonna interrupt. So on our last van, <clears throat> we didn't have any sort of protective coverings at all. No. And, um, you know, we did a lot of gravel and off-road sort of <clears throat> roads and the front of our van was so damaged from rocks there was you know stone chips all over the 
the um, chassis and the yeah. the front section. So. It basically like sandblasted <laughs> the front end. It took all the paint and everything off. Yeah, it did. So yeah, we wanted to do as much as we could to protect the front end. Yeah. Um, or the jockey wheel. It came with a, a standard looking, no name brand one. It's probably an Alco or something. I'm not too sure. We're, we're thinking maybe we'll swap that out with one of those trailer mate um, jacking stands. Uh, I do have one thanks to uh, Tiff's old man, Brian. And that's actually where we're filming at the moment, by the way. This isn't our house, it's, it's the in-laws place. Uh, let's move around, babe. Um, standard sort of hatches here for the tunnel boot. What I do like is that uh, it's got a little friction lock there to hold it up into place. Yeah, that's great. Uh, there's the bayonet fitting there for gas. So what we're thinking of doing, uh, well, we've already ordered it. We've got like a big Dun & Watson slide. We're gonna put the Ziggy on top there and uh, there'll be a small sort of um, prep space there as well. Uh, inside here, there's a light to light that all up, oh, which isn't on at the moment because the electrics are all switched off, but there is a light in there. Um, it did come with a white eye anti-theft system, but as you can see, they've done a pretty bodgy job wiring it up. And yeah. that, <laughs> I'm gonna have to redo that myself. Listen, on that note, we paid full price for this caravan, should make that absolutely clear. We have no affiliation to Willow. Um, and it's not all going to be beers and Skittles. No, um, and as we found out already, it's not. There's more on that coming soon. But yeah, we've already had a few wiring issues and we want to show you around it, not make it too negative. So let's just show you the van and we'll talk about the issues later. <laughs> but there are issues. Um, yeah, so white eye anti-theft system. That's also going to be the wireless um, brake controller and wireless towing for lights and all that sort of stuff. I'll, I'll show you that a little bit later, maybe in another video when I wire that thing in. But yeah, tunnel boot goes through and through so you can access it from the other side. And I do like how they've got the jack and the um, tire change stuff. It's all, it's got a spot, it's all mounted in there. Can you see that? Yeah. Yep. I quite like that, it's out the way. Um, Solera awning, which we've, uh, we've never had a Solera awning before. So, and we haven't pulled it out yet, so we don't know what it looks like. But um, I think there's a couple of things we want to do for it because the length of it, we're going to get, you can get a support uh, in the middle there and we'll also get some anti-flat bars and a few other things but uh, we'll source them ourselves because it's all very expensive doing it through um, the manufacturer. Um, let's move around. What about the door and whatnot? Oh yeah, good point. So did you open that? Yep. Yeah. So we actually um, optioned up this door. This door is a... Dometic. Dometic and it came factory with a... Oh, Hartel I think it is. Yeah. Apparently the factory door is, is no good whatsoever. The problems with latches. Yeah. So they've um, they've actually from standard now they've replaced all vans with this door. So that's the standard option now. Yeah. So we, yeah we paid a little bit more for it on our order, but I think they've factored that cost in now. Yeah. Um, it splits and you know yeah, it seems to be quite good. Um, the only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is that the front of it is glass, and I think these <laughs> come standard on Jayco's and a few other vans. Yeah, lots even Zone like four. Oh, Zone three, as well. Yeah. Okay. That, well, that makes me feel a bit better. <laughs> But um, yeah, I don't know, I just worry that that's gonna get smashed. It just seems weird to put glass on the outside of a caravan. Mm, we'll see. Um, yeah, so there's some lights here so you can see what you're doing. A normal sort of standard fold down picnic yep. table. Um, just to interrupt, there is normally um, speakers up at the top yes. there as well. We deleted the yeah. stereo system, we just don't use it. Oh, also, I think I told you already, Tiff, I've also, um, when the solar panels went on top at off-road living, I've actually removed the mast for the TV antenna. Oh yeah. Yeah, so we're not into that. We don't really watch um, normal TV. We don't really listen to the radio or, yeah. We're boring. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, we watch a bit of Netflix we or like whatever. We watch the campfire. Yeah, we'll sit around the fire or, or talk smack or yeah. whatever, but yeah. Anyway. Wheels. Yeah, 15 inch, 15 inch rims. Um, so, yeah, I would have rathered some bigger wheels, but um, yeah, it comes on these little things. So it is what it is. I'll show you the suspension underneath in a minute. We'll work around there. Uh, 10 amp outlet there for um, 240 volts. So you could run your induction cooker or a fry pan or something on your picnic table. A couple of USB ports and um, cigarette plugs and stuff there. A toilet cassette is here. It's Thetford. Um, Just your normal cassette toilet. Yep. A little bit of a void there where we can potentially put our chemicals. We need to make sure that fits, but that would work quite nicely. We're going to get a second cassette because I find Power, water, and toilet are the three things that sort of limit how long you can stay places. But we always fill the toilet before we run out of um, power or water. So mm -hmm. we'll get a second cassette. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, if you, we didn't get the full annex, we don't do that. Um, we, we'll, we'll get like a um, 
a shade privacy cloth screen. sort of privacy screen. Uh, we've already ordered one, haven't we? Yep. Hasn't rocked up it's yet. It's coming today. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, and we'll run that off the end just to block out a little bit of wind and light and for a bit of privacy. Uh, but we would never do the full annex. We haven't ordered it. We've never used one before. We don't stay anywhere long enough to warrant getting one. But if you did do the full annex and you made this a sealed off room, it'd be pretty gross to be emptying your toilet through. So. I don't know. It's a sealed unit. Yeah, it is. Right, we did the awning. A uh, little sort of tow bar thingy off the back. I'm probably going to maybe potentially modify that so it comes out a bit further so that I can put a firewood rack or jerry cans or store my boat trailer or something off that. Single spare. Safety Dave cameras, one facing down so that you don't back into things and one facing back so that you can see traffic behind you, I guess. That's about it. And the other side's much the same. I'll show you inside uh, underneath the kids' bunks, which are here, but there was an option to get another hatch here and we should have done it in retrospect because there's yeah. not a lot of external storage. Yeah, we'll show you the inside. Yeah, so I should have done that in retrospect, but we didn't. Um water so underneath there is two 95 litre fresh water tanks and one i think it might only be an 80 litre gray water tank um, in the past with the last van we turned that gray water tank into more fresh water storage we're not going to do that on this one because 300 litres of water or just under is starting to get pretty heavy for us with our um, gross combined mass limitations so we're just going to run the 200 litres of fresh water and we'll keep the gray water tank yeah we feel like that's probably enough that's been enough for us yeah. in the past yeah now you'll notice um, the fridge would be around here inside. Normally they have a couple of vents there for three-way fridges so they can breathe. I'll show you inside, but we've got a compressor fridge which um, it vents inside. So that meant two less sort of spots for um, just dust or water ingress, which we're pretty happy about. That one would be for the microwave, I think, Tiff? Yes. And that one would be for the range hood. Yes. So I'll probably do something with them to semi-block them or put some foam or something in there. I don't know yet. But we have the, speaking of dust, let's talk about the carafan. So, yep. So for, say from standard at... <clears throat> yeah, so they offer the Dometic um, dust reduction system, the DRS from standard, which is a passive dust re uh, reduction system. It's basically a big air ram. And as you're driving, air gets smashed in, comes inside the caravan through a filter, and then it sort of pressurizes everything. But it only works while you're driving and at speed you need to force the air in um, and I would sort of heard you know hit and miss things about those how effective they were um, lots of happy people some people not so happy uh, but I just think they do a, a one that's runs off 12 volt uh, called the carafan which we got and it's the same idea except it's basically a huge exhaust fan kind of thing that sucks air in and pressurizes it so that'll work when we're on really slow you know dusty roads or you know anything like that. We just sort of thought that would work better. So we've optioned, well, no, we didn't. We couldn't get that through no, factory. We we've bought it direct from Carafan and we're gonna get an installer to put it in for Ourselves, us. Ourselves, we'll organize that. So um, I'll show you that when it, when it gets fit. Uh, inlet for the, um, you know, shore power at the Caravan Park or home. Um, suburban hot water system or Swift? Swift. Swift, Swift hot water system. And um, so yeah, hot water system. Oh, Tiff, I need to tell you this as well. And we'll explain this in the electrical fit out video but the electric hot, um the hot water system inside this caravan is only going to run off gas or 240 volt in power i've it's been wired up in such a way tiff that it cannot run off the inverter okay. and that was done intentionally because we hear lots of stories of people that accidentally flick them on and they run off the inverter and they drain your batteries it's just not efficient to heat your water um, by batteries when you've got gas on the front it doesn't make sense so that was something we did and i'm really happy with that uh, there's a sa sail track rail up there so that we can have another shade off this side. The idea was the kids' bunks are there and the um, fridge is there, which works out kind of convenient because they're the two things that you, you want to keep the, the sun off. Um, so if we're staying somewhere longer, we will potentially do that. Um, tunnel boot, same as the other side, through and through. And oh, we will just quickly show you underneath the caravan and then I'll have Tiff show you inside the caravan. So what do we got? Um, yeah, the plumbing and stuff's not too bad. It looks fairly neat. And fresh water tank, another fresh water tank at the back and the gray water tank at the back there as well. Now this is, as I said, this is the Alco Enduro X suspension. It is marketed for off-road use. Um, it's, a, it's rated to 4.1 ton for a um, dual axle like this. And it's coil sprung though. We really wanted airbag. So, 
kind of um, maybe good timing. We couldn't do it through Willow it's themselves, but Alco, the brand that make this suspension, are in the process of designing an airbag kit that you can retrofit to this um, this suspension. So that's something that we can potentially do ourselves or have done uh, in the future, and we'd like to if we can. It just depends how expensive it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Do you want to show them the plate as well? Show them. Oh yeah, the compliance yeah. plate. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just in here. What are we working with? So they have said that the tear was 2498. We were initially told the tear was going to be somewhere around 2450. I don't know if you can see that. So this went about 50 kilos over what they initially told us, um, but that worked out about right because we optioned up a few things, nothing hectic. I'll show you a list a little bit later. But we roughly worked out how heavy all those um, options were and we knew it was going to be an extra 50 or so kilos. So that came out about bang on. So it's about two and a half ton tear by the compliance plate. Real weight was about 2,540, so an extra 40 kilos. Like we said, we reckon that's some of the dead space in the water tanks and probably just the gas bottles filled. Um, factory, these things only have a 3.2 ton ATM, which would give you, quick maths here, Tiff, oh, 700. Which is very generous. It's a lot, um, and that's enough, I think. We did an ATM upgrade, which brings it up to 3.4 ton for the ATM. So an extra couple of hundred kilos um, payload in this caravan. I don't actually know what they changed to do that. I haven't been able to um, sort of identify anything that they've actually changed, but yeah. Anyway, it gives, yeah. it gives us a, a real workable payload with the real weights that I got of 850 kilos, which is heaps. Yeah. We're really happy And with great that. for future-proofing, like when we get a new car. And that was the thought process yeah. behind it. Um, my car is on its limits towing, towing this, um, you know, which we'll talk more about in the future when we load everything up and weigh it. Uh, we, there's a new car on the cards eventually. It's just a matter of time, really. Anyway, should we go inside? Oh, yeah. Right, oh, Tiff's taking us in. Let's go. Come on in. Oh, I've turned all the power off. Do you want me to turn it on? Uh, so you got lights? Yeah. All right, let's do that. Here, you hold that. Just Watch. going to quickly mention as well why Cam's turning the power on inside. Um, so he's done a whip round outside. I'm going to do one inside, but the van isn't actually set up yet. So when it's set up and I've put everything in its spots, I'm going to do another video, um, something like storage and organisation in your van, just with little hacks. Because I know I was on YouTube the other day and I was actually searching something to watch and I couldn't really find much. So I think people are actually quite interested in what there is to, you know, all those little, um, all those little hacks for storage and organisation. So we've got mummy and daddy bed here. Nice big queen size bed. It's only a queen size, but it's quite generous and we fit nicely. So see how we go. Um, <clears throat> coming around, it is also one of those bolster beds. So that's set up in full size mode at the moment. Um, and then that little section at the top can flip up to make the bed shorter, just so there's more room for when you walk inside. So over here we have the battery oh, guys have put a picture up in there. They did say they're going to put something in there. Is it appropriate for YouTube or no, not? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, so I'll just show you quickly. Um, ro robes in here. This comes standard with um, hanging space, but we don't hang clothes, so we thought store it, um, shelves would be better. So it's got... I'm two... sorry to interrupt, but they did... When, they, when I was driving the van out, <laughs> they were like, Cam, wait, does your wife have a sense of humour? <laughs> and I said, yeah, and they said, all right, good. Just do a quick walk around your van and look through all your cupboards before, oh, you, before you show anyone. <laughs> so there might be some surprises. Yeah. That's the boys from Off-Road Living. Okay, so we've got one of them on each side, and yeah. then up the top here, we've got overhead storage as well. Yeah, they're all the same. All like, the same, yeah. Yeah, full storage in there. Um, you talked about the little nooky bit, didn't you? Oh, yeah, there is a little nook through here. Um, I feel like it's one of those spaces where if you put anything in it, it would just disappear into the void and you'd never see it again. Um, but we'll see how we go. Mm. Probably a good spot for your phone and whatnot. Little um, lights up here with USB ports as well. Yeah, they've got them everywhere. They're really handy. Yeah, and then you can see that front window um, from here too. That'll be, that'll be good for letting lots of light in. There is quite a big um, bedside sort of table here. I think that's because the hot water system's under there, so that's why yep. it's larger on this side versus that side. Yep. There's little shelves and stuff all over the place, hey, like these. What do you, is that what you'd call Yeah, them? I think they call it like a shoe rack. But yeah, but they've got them everywhere. Yeah. 
And yeah, there's more shelves up here. This is the spot for the TV, which it came with, but we haven't set it up yet. And then we've got these Sirocco fans everywhere. I think uh, from Standard it came with two Sirocco fans. We've optioned it up to five. There's two in the bunk and we'll show you as we get through. So we've got one on each for the main bed here. I'm glad they went with black fans too. Mm. I don't like the white because you can see the dust. They get filthy. Oh, magazine pockets, the bed. And I think that's it for there. So coming on through. Oh, I'll just quickly mention about colour schemes as well. So this uh, wood grain that you see everywhere, the trimmings, there was two options for that. We went with the lighter wood grain. The floor is standard, so there's no options for the floor. And then you can choose your cupboards, upper and lower, and the colour of the couch. And the bench tops, babe? Could you pick oh, them? Oh, yes, you can too. You can go, yeah, this lighter colour, or there's like a more marbled texture. Uh, we went with black leather and gloss metallic silver cupboards. I went with gloss. I've heard lots of people say, don't go with gloss if you've got kids because you can see all their fingerprints. I went against the advice and I got gloss just because I like it better and I think the light bounces off it. So. I'm really happy with the color scheme yeah, so here, am I. actually. Yeah, so we'll see how we go. <clears throat> uh, so living room, <clears throat> we've got the telescopic table. Yeah. It moves up and down and crosses around. You can lower it completely. And then you can get a cushion insert. We didn't order it, but you can get a cushion and that turns into like another bed. Aircon, we upgraded to the Truma Aventa. It came standard with a Have Bel Air. A, Bel Air. Yes, you're right. Horton. Horton. So this one used slightly less power and it weighed slightly less. And I think it's slightly less um, powerful for cooling, but um, the trade-off was worth it for weight and power consumption. Yeah, and just a more well-known brand, I think, isn't yep. it? Yep. Yeah, well, so. I had never heard of the other yeah. one, Bel Air Horton. Yeah. I'm sure other people have, but we haven't. Yeah, yeah. So coming through to the kitchen, these cupboards are sort of both used, so there's not much storage there, but you've got the electrical stuff, and then I don't really know what that's for. That was the TV, the TV antenna, but we've disconnected all of that. Yeah, maybe the, back, the sort of guts of the range would are in there, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, Swift stove... This was what caused a little bit of a hold up getting the van. I think they were waiting on the stove. So that, I think that issue is resolved for now. So it's got a four burner, three gas, one electric, and then it's got the grill. We didn't get an oven just because we didn't really need one. Yeah, it meant, meant we got a few, um, couple of extra yeah, drawers there. We get this extra drawer space in here, which I've already partly filled. And these are a soft cl close as well, which is quite nice. Mm. Can you just show my one little whinge about the drawers? The ones underneath the sink there, how they're a bit shorter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That nah. one's like a hatch. It's not really usable in there. So... And we've got the cutlery. More things in here. This is what Cam was talking about. If you notice when it pulls out, how, like, low that is. Whereas that could potentially be, you know, pushed up to there. So you'd get a much deeper drawer. A bit more for, usable space. For filling stuff. It's not a huge deal, I don't know. No, no, it's a minor. Yeah. We've actually got winch. so much storage in this van... We wouldn't like, I don't think we'll even fill half of these. No, we won't. These cupboards. We just no. don't, we don't have that much stuff. We don't know what to put in there. <clears throat> another drawer. And that's another one of those weird pop down cupboards. But my soda stream fits really nicely in there. Oh, it's handy. Uh, this has already been modified a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you said that, modified. <laughs> it, Ruined. It was, was it four shelves or five? Uh, I only one, removed two, two three, so there was four. only was three. Four. No, nah, just three. Only removed two. Oh, okay. Anyway, it was shelves the whole way down, which is great, but... They were really um, not... There wasn't a lot of room. They weren't very tall. You wouldn't fit a jar or a can or anything in there, I don't Yeah, think. and we feel like we've already got enough storage here for our kitchen stuff. So we thought there's nowhere for a bin in this van, and we don't want to have a bin just sitting around. So we're going to... Well, can's going to uh, mount a bin to this somehow. So it can be closed with the bin like attached to the door, which I think would be really handy. Mm. <clears throat> uh, standard stainless stove. Not a lot of bench space really, um, but um, yeah, I guess you, yeah. You, you cut your stuff up on top of this or, or on here. top of there, or even on this table. We'll make do, um, but yeah, not a huge amount of bench space. As soon as you put bunks in a caravan, you lose a lot of room. Yeah, I mean, this is really spacious for us. Yeah, we're like, yeah. It's amazing. Um, <clears throat> this is a fusion lock thing I've already done. It's, you know, one of those hand soap things. Um, stove. I mean, not stove. Sink. 
microwave. So it's one of the ones with the glass plates, not the plateless ones. Yep. Um, and I've, where are you thinking of putting it? I've just put the plate in here, which I thought was a pretty handy little spot. Yeah, works all right. Yeah. Microwave. I like the lighting in here, babe. There's little, yeah. there's, they've got these little um, ambient, know, ambient lights cool. everywhere. There's a lot of different options it's for great. lights. Yeah. And then we've got more storage up here. So I'd probably put some of the pantry, like the lighter pantry items up here. And then we've got another drawer down here, which I think will be for like your heavy cans and um, pantry items. Yeah. <clears throat> L-shaped couch, another hatch up here for more food. Got the Thetford compressor fridge. 100, 180, 175 litres. I'll put it on the screen. 174. We yeah. did Google it. Yeah, we did. I think you're right. Yeah. I think it came with a, a three way from standard, so this was an optional upgrade as well. Um, I quite like this. It, it's small for. Like some of the some of the fridges you see in caravans now. Are yeah, they're massive. going full size kitchen fridges. You know, like two hundred liters plus. Um, I don't really feel like we need that much. We don't. Coming from what we had, we had a. We we travelled last time with two forty liter fridges. One yeah. forty liter fridge, one forty liter freezer. Yeah. So this is massive for us. So wait, fridge, and then you've got this drawer for the freezer. I really freezer. like that. Yeah, I like having the freezer on the bottom. I think it's great. And then that's where it, that's the vent. So it actually vents inside. Um, just your standard fire extinguisher. Here's another one of the fans we got. Your standard sort of hatch. Yeah. Might open it just so we can get some air. Oh, that's better. Yeah, you get a good flow through that. Yeah, and then you got your, I might show you down here actually. Mm. With all the windows, you've got your, your standard sort of um, blackout and then fly screen. They join together and you can you know, change it depending on what you want. These windows are different to what we've had in the past. Um, I probably like the ones we've had in the past a yeah, little me bit too. better. Yeah. Just because when you open them, I mean this is all standard, but when you open them, with our last windows in the in the Forbes, they used to have three different clicking positions. So you'd click it into space. Um, with this one, you've actually got to tighten the like the tension, it's like a tension rod. You've got to tighten it so it stays. It's not a big deal, but it's nah, just an another, extra... Another minor winch. It's an extra <laughs> step, you know? And then more of these reading lights with USB points. So there's heaps of GPOs and USB points all around this caravan. Yep, I think there's actually more storage under the, the couch, but we haven't even had a look yet. All right, coming through. Yeah. Anything around the door? Just, well, there's a bit of hat storage or something up there. Yeah, yeah, just some, some little hooks, probably for your keys or your hats. And just your... Yeah. Standard stuff. <laughs> right, so now to our Cam's favourite thing in the van, the Constantina door. This yeah. was a this was a um, an optional upgrade. You could have got this, which is the Constantina divider. So it's on a little magnet thing. Or there was an option to get a full size, like wooden cavity door, which is what the bathroom is. The reason why we went with this one and not the cavity door was because this was cheaper. <laughs> uh, but, it takes up less space too. Yeah, it? less space. So if you'd got the solid door, you would have lost about, I don't know how much, but probably like 10 centimetres worth of, of length from your bunks because it had to go somewhere into the void. So we went with this. It's not really, it's, it's mainly just to, like when Brody's having a sleep during the day, just for us. So he can't to, see us. To be able yeah. to close this and just let some of the, you know, block out some of the light. So when that's shut, the business happens. Um, my main complaint about that was that um, it just looked flimsy, yes. and uh, sure and enough, it has proven to be flimsy. So the day yeah. the day we brought it home, <laughs> Chloe came running in it after school, and she, I showed her how this worked, and she she was you know playing with it as they do, and she's actually ripped the entire thing off the track up here. Um, it did just pop back in, so it might be okay. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. Yeah. Anyway, so that's there, and then you want to stick some lights on down there. Yep. If we, we're still figuring out what lights does what. There's a heap of switches in this caravan. I know. Is that enough? Yeah, that'll do. All right, I'll just lock this door too. How do we do that? Oh, no, no, you can only no, lock can't. it shut. Yeah, that's a, that's a, 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 something. Anyway, we'll come back to yeah. that. Um, so bunks, you can option three bunks. We've just gone with the two because that's all we need. So we've got Chloe on top. She's already set her bed up. <laughs> that was the first thing she did. And then we've got Brody on the bottom. This was an extra that we got Willow to fit for us. It's like a baby, 
you know, barrier net. Yeah, that's pretty it's, good. Yeah, it's quite good. It just clips on and off and then you can just roll it down, you know, when it's not in use. Yeah, I thought that's quite good. Mm. Um, More reading lights and USB points in the end. Yeah, we've got fans that we got fitted for both of their bunks. And they've um, got a, um, a window each as well. Yeah, window each and... Uh, we just like that these are so spacious. Um, I think they're actually more spacious than most caravan. Yeah, I'll put the dimensions beds. on the screen because I do seem to remember they were a bit yeah, bigger than normal. Yeah, I think they're normal. quite a lot wider. So they're really good. You know, Chloe can sit up really well. She can sit up and, you know, like that clear of the roof, her head, so she can sit up and play. And, and Brody obviously can too when he's a bit older. Um, as we mentioned when we were outside, when Cam was doing it with the... The, t the tunnel, the, yeah, the hatch. The hatch. We, could, we could have got, but we didn't. Yeah, so we could have got that hatch, and then which meant you could have accessed all the storage under here from the outside. But now, because we haven't done that, you have to lift up the whole bed and that hatch. And it's a massive space, that and there's, one. Yeah, there's heaps of storage under there. And it's behind the rear axles, which I like. So we will utilize that, but we'll, we'll put things that we don't often need in there that we're not trying to access all the time, like yeah. winter jackets, boots, I don't know, Ugg boots or Wellington boots or whatever. Yeah. That yep. sort of stuff. Uh, there's another drawer here. So lots more storage. And then at the back we've got more storage. Got, <laughs> Chloe's yeah. been decorating. She has. So we've got the three um, shelves. And then there's a drawer each. They're full of stuff already. So what I was thinking was one drawer each for the kids. And then I was going to use the third drawer as a laundry hamper. Just so we don't have to, you know, lug it in and out of the shower or wherever you wanted to store it. So we might do that. So moving to the bathroom, uh, we've got this door, this wooden sliding door, <clears throat> which is quite good to have. Um, it does have a, so it does lock into place when you're traveling up here, <clears throat> but there's nothing to lock it into place when you're actually set up. So if you're on a little bit of an angle, <clears throat> we do find that this door sort of works its way shut. So it might get camped to <clears throat> maybe bolt something to the floor. Yeah, I'll stick or... another latch down the bottom. Yeah. Or maybe even here. Something. Yeah, we'll like a child lock or something. Yeah. We'll figure that. Yeah. Um, how are you gonna get in here? Where are you going? Over here. Right. Alright, so there's some more shelves in here. I've already decorated it with some little fake plants, which I thought was quite cool. They just um they just velcroed on. So we'll see how they go travelling. Thetford toilet, we showed you on the outside. Just one of those standard cassette toilets. It's on a, I think this whole thing swivels. Yeah, it does. Oh, right. Yeah, so it's, all, it's like that because obviously when you sit on it to go to the toilet, you've got to sit sideways because otherwise your, your knees would bang into this. Just being a bunk van, there's so much you've got to fit in. You've got to think, you know, you've got to be quite, quite clever with how you do things. So mm. anyway, it's quite good. I can, I can sit here, shut the door. Might be more of a problem for you, but we'll see how we go. Yeah, no, I'll do it. I'll do it with the door open anyway. Yeah, uh, we're, <laughs> we're quite happy to have a cheap, and Brody's going to be sleeping right there as you're on the toilet. Poor thing. Yeah, we're quite happy to have a cassette toilet. We've not ever run mm. a, a composting toilet, which is the you know the rage now, but I don't know. I sort of just think if you're going to have to empty the wee tank of your composting toilet. You might as well just take the whole cassette down to the dump box. But yeah, it's the old, um, you know, the old saying: if it's not broke, don't fix it. Like, yeah, we're, we're, we don't have an issue with the cassettes. We don't. We're not too worried about emptying them. Yeah, we never found with the last one. We never felt that um, thought that it smelled particularly no. bad. If you're in hot weather, we'd often dose a little bit more of the blue. Yeah. So chemicals. yeah, yeah, yeah. Our only yeah. tips would be only use the blue chemical. Don't use the green Enviro one. Yeah, and the and the Thetford brand. I think yeah. you can get cheaper alternatives. I've heard people say they put nappy sand. In we, the we can't. We've never done that. So we've not done that, but. We have tried a few of the cheaper. We tried chemicals. the sachets. The sachets did they they it's the toilet stunk more if you use sachets or the green chemical. The blue chemical from Fetford yeah. seemed to be yeah. um the winner. Yeah, we thought that was the best. Yeah. Um so it didn't come with a, a dunny roll holder, but I have put one of these fusion lock ones on here. Got a little window, we've got the basin, um more storage up here. It's got one of your standard you know, wind up hatches, exhaust fans. You can turn it on. Down here, we've got the Kamek. 
I think it's a two and a half kilo washing machine. Now that, um, we haven't tested it yet, but from what we're hearing, they're quite efficient on water. Well, more so than I would have thought. <clears throat> yeah, I think I've heard 20 litres. Yeah. We'll, we'll test that, but I think it's 20 litres uh, and you can do a quick 20 minute wash. I like that it's down on the base of the van too. I have heard that these can rock your van quite a lot. Yeah. And that when they're often up on the walls, it can be quite shaky. Yeah. <laughs> we were a little concerned. Looking at pictures of the van and stuff, we saw this thing in the middle and we just thought, oh my God, that takes up all your room. But it's actually not so bad. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't interfere with my walkway or anything. No, but I mean, we're the, we're the sort of people that when we're doing our showering and stuff in there, we, you know, we'll probably have the door open. Um, you know, with little kids, it's not such an issue. But if yeah. with that door shut, it would be a little bit tighter. It'd yeah. be pretty hard. Yeah, got some more of these fusion lock things I've just already put on. And then I just spotted another picture in here. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, I might take it out. Yeah, take it out. <laughs> It's too rude for YouTube. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. Then All right, good so you've got, you've got your, your shower in here. Um, it's got these built-in sort of recess shelves, which I quite like. Um, just your standard. I've put a little uh, Bunnings, you know, those, what are they called? Flexi tubs, whatever yeah. they're called. Um, that'll be for Brody when he. What I'm what I'm planning to do is shower Chloe first, and poor second child has Gets the, the drinks. has the leftover shower water. Hey, for that's, his, you and I would have grown up like that, bath. babe. Yeah, yeah, no, I did. I remember having three siblings. I remember both being of us. the I remember being the third bath. Yeah, yeah. same. Yeah. Right, so I'll just take that out for now. Oh. Whoa, psycho! <laughs> so shower. It's plenty of room. It's not not overly spacious, but it's enough to you know wash your hair and whatnot. And then we've got this strange, oh. strange door. This is another one of the things I wasn't sure about and I'm still not, not sold. Yeah, so a lot of caravans, you know, you usually have your, is it glass or perspex or? Yeah, probably perspex or some sort yeah. of plastic. Anyway, it's normally a door, but because there's just not really any room in here, I think that's why. Um, they've got this, I'm not going to open it yet because it's very noisy, yeah, but it's, no. it's sort of like a really hard plastic. Yeah. Um, and apparently, from what I've heard, it's mold treated, so like you know, it doesn't because it rolls up when it's yeah. We've open. we've chatted to people that have that get, have this sort of um screen, and everyone seems to be pretty happy with it. Yeah, so, we'll see how we go. But yeah. anyway, I'll I'll show you. Give it a rest. I'm just worried <coughs> that we're gonna have a ten month old learning to walk just go straight through it while Mum's having a shower. Ten month old, he's not even crawling yet. Yeah, I know yeah. it's unlikely. Yeah. Anyway. We'll see how we go. That's it, I think, guys. Well done. That's the inside, that's the outside. So, um, just to sort of wrap things up, uh, just to let you know sort of what these things cost, the, the recommended retail when we bought it was 85 grand, right? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. It, yep. has, it has gone up, I think, about $15,000, which it's is crazy. Started, started about 100 now. And that's just since we ordered it in... I think we ordered in March, so yeah. in what, you know, a few months it's gone up that much. They have made a few changes, you know, with the door that we mentioned, but yeah, yeah they have gone up a lot, so. So we ended up optioning up, you know, we, we thought we were being pretty frugal with what we optioned up. Yeah. First of all, we don't want to spend too much money. Second of all, um, we're quite concerned about weight, so we're trying to be, um, yeah, fairly frugal. Mm -hmm. And we, we still manage to option up about 10 grand worth of stuff, and I'll show you on the list there. I'm just getting my drink. So that ended up coming to um, a bit, and then a couple of grand for freight, ended up coming to about ninety-seven thousand um, dollars. But yeah, like Tiff said, they're now. Oh, just quick, sorry to interrupt. The issue of the freight. The freight. Mm. Normally, you wouldn't pay for the freight; it was included in the cost. Um, that was that was to send it via sea, which I've heard is the better way to send things because it's cleaner and and neater. Uh, there's apparently there's a delay, as with everything. There's a delay with getting um, caravans on the ship at the moment. It was going to be an extra month that we had to wait for the van. Yeah, and we and had we, stuff booked already. We had stuff booked to fit out um, and trips as well. So mm. we decided to pay a little bit extra money to get it sent by a road. Yeah. Just so we didn't miss out on our holidays and our commitments. Yeah, so. no regrets. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it ended up costing us about $97,000.
So coming up, probably the next video you'll see will be the 24 volt lithium battery build that's mm. we've literally just been finished today. Oh, so we didn't, yeah, we didn't mention that in that in this video no. under, under the bed. Do you want? We'll give you a little sneak peek. You want to yeah. see underneath the bed? So under the bed before, and you can you've got some footage of before. Yeah. So we can sneak that in. We we ordered it with one AGM battery, which, which is, is ridiculous. Which is crazy. That's what they come standard with. You couldn't even you couldn't run the compressor fridge overnight with one no. battery. Anyway, but we did that because we we had it booked in for off road living. So. Yeah. Here's a sneak peek of what it looks like now. You haven't seen this yet either, No. Either. What do you reckon? Wow, it's so neat, isn't it? I don't know, they've done an amazing job. I will explain what all of this is, what it does, what it weighs uh, in the next video. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I can show you how we're going to be able to run everything off it, off grid for, yep. you know, lengthy periods of time, which is really yep. cool. And then we've got a few trips planned. Yep, so you'll see videos of those that we're gonna have to do a shakedown trip first. We'll take you with us just to make sure everything works. Yep, you wanted to do a, like a sort of a, a mods type video for yeah. traveling Australia, you know, the diesel heater, the caravan, the- Yeah, little bits and pieces that, that we've learned from our um, trips and travels, little things that work, little things that don't, and a few modifications we're going to do just to make it a little bit more comfortable for touring in this thing. So I'll do a video yep. on that, a couple of things to install, actually quite a few things to install. Yes, lots and, of work to be done. Yeah. And then I was going to do another video of, you know, inside yeah. storage and organisation type things. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. Yeah, we're actually really excited just to, I think for the main the main reason of just being able to get out and about again, we have, yeah. I know I have missed, um, heaps. I've missed camping and caravanning. <clears throat> You've missed a lot of trips um, yeah. with the baby and not having a caravan. Yeah, and he's a great baby. So, you know, he could have, we could have come out a lot sooner, but we got the van much sooner than we anticipated anyway. So yeah, yeah we're excited to, to get out and start doing some trips and yeah, it'll be good. Oh, and actually another trip that we're going to have We've got the caravan in time for the Patreon group camp. So you and the kids and the caravan are all going to be there. Yep. So if that's something you're interested in on, on uh, being a part of, um, I'll put the link to Patreon below. Um, and yeah, you're more than welcome to come along to that uh, if you want to be a part of it. Yeah. Cool. I think we'll wrap it up there, right? Eh? Yeah, I think. So yeah, next video, 12 volt and then trip videos, which will be nice. 24 volt. Yeah. Cool. Cheers, guys. See you in the next one. See ya. There's magic coursing throughout my veins. I feel invincible in every way I'ma give it all I got It may not be my birthday But I just want to celebrate